Hey now, what's up you guys? It is Friday. It's time for your Friday's edition of Met Me Listen, I can't even talk already. Treadmill motivation, that's what I'm trying to say. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Y'all to help me out. Look, y'all, it's Friday. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Welcome to this session of working out. It's Friday. Come on, y'all. What's up? Where y'all at? It's time to get busy. Are you working out? I know it's like, what time is it? 12.39? Okay, you can walk out on your lunch break. You can, you can walk around the office. You can walk up and down the street. I know it's like high noon, you know, a little after high noon where most of y'all living. You know, I just left the desert, you know, and it was like already steaming and, and, and it was already hot. You know, I got coastal skin, you know, San Diego, I got coastal skin. What's up, Kev? So you, this is all about coastal weather for me. So when I go to the desert, my skin is like, ah, what is this, you know? But hey, let's get this thing kicked off. I know I'm late, but you know what? Better late than never. And this is, I guess you could say part three of taking my life and taking your life and taking our lives and taking our lives to a higher level in God, taking our lives a higher level in life itself, a higher level and a higher degree of understanding, higher degree of success, higher degree of love, higher degree of, of education, whatever it is, we want you to take your life to another dimension, take your life to another level of where you are right now. So we've been talking about six steps to a happy, happier, what's up? Runny, a higher, uh, six steps to a happier, better life. Now, let me let me do what I normally do. What's up, Terry? This is your boy Eminem. This is Treadmill Motivation for Friday. I'm glad you guys are here. Like I always tell you, share with your friends, share with your loved ones, and share it with those that you really don't like too too much. You know, long as they don't find out, right? Long as they don't know that you don't like them. You know, send it over to them and says, hey, I got something I want you to watch. You know, it blessed me, it, it, it motivated me, it helped me, and I just want to share it with you, all right? So let's get this let's get this thing rolling. Six steps to a happier, better life. Monday, we talked about overcoming your past and how important it is for you to overcome your past. Mark, what's up? And, and then on Wednesday, we talked about changing your present beliefs and present habits. That is crucial if you want a happier, better life. One, over, overcome some of your past pain and past hurts. I had said that I'm in the process of, of writing a book called Prisoner of My Pain. And basically what I'm gonna be talking about is all that I've endured over my life and some of the relationships that I was in and out of and what I dealt with in church and out of church and, and some of the things that a pastor's son goes through and growing up, because a lot of people don't know, you know, certain sides of pastor's kids. They always say the pastor's kids are the worst ones on the block. Well, sometimes that's true. And, you know, we lived up to some of that. What's up, Cliff? Good to see you, man. But here's the thing. When you're a prisoner of your pain, that's a whole different area to where now people can start looking into your deeper psyches of your life and how you grew up, or at least how I grew up as a pastor's kid and what you know I dealt with as a pastor kid, not to say that I've dealt with a lot of negativity in the home because we didn't. We had a great home life. Great, I mean wonderful home life. So that's not my backstory. My backstory is the life I lived while being a pastor's son. Now that's gonna be a good right. But you guys keep your keep it locked for that. Number three, today, understanding yourself understanding yourself and like I did on Monday and Wednesday let me go down through the list of what we're going to be talking about these six steps and one bonus number one overcoming your past number two changing your present beliefs and habits number three which we'll be talking about today understanding yourself number four is living a healthier lifestyle this is why I do what I do, because I want to live a healthier lifestyle. And hopefully, you know, those of you that watch me and those of you that follow me, 
you're doing some type of ex exercise, you know, 30 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, get that heart rate up, whatever it is, walking in place, jogging in place, doing some jumping jacks, whatever it is, we want to live a healthier lifestyle. Number five is loving yourself and others. Number six, being thankful. I mean, we can go through all the steps out there that all these gurus are putting out there, several steps to this and several steps to that and several steps to the other. But if you're not thankful, man, that's, that's like the capper on everything that we can do in life is being thankful. That was number six. Now, number seven, the bonus. The bonus part of this. Hey, Everett, what's up? The bonus is gonna be, be willing to learn more always. Yeah, it's good to be back on the treadmill, y'all. I've been kicking it. Nah, you know, I've been, I've been working. Now nah, I've been working. I've been doing some landscaping. So I have been working. It just wasn't on the treadmill. But today is good to be back home, be back on the treadmill, back with you guys. Stacy, what's up? You still working it out? Hope so. Hope so. I want a report from you guys. You know, if you've lost one pound, you know, I at least want to know that because that's, that's an achievement. And we can celebrate that, whether it's a half a pound, one pound, or if you've lost as much as I've lost, you know, close to close to 30 pounds. Man, we want to celebrate all of you guys. This is all a part of living a healthier, better life. What's up, JP, my boy? Man, I got both y'all in here. Woo! -hoo! Man, I'm really, I'm up here doing something good. I got April and JP. Hey! Booyah! All right, now, let me... Let me get back to work. Marion, what's up, man? All right, listen, let's get to number three so we can get, get you out of here off your Friday and so you can start your Friday off right, okay? Now, number three is understanding yourself in six steps to a happier, better life. Like I always say, we want to take our life. I want to take our life. Do it look, I look skinny? Really? Oh, I thank you. I appreciate it. It must be working. <laughs> Anyway, understanding yourself. Now, we could come to an area where we begin to look at ourselves and decide what needs to be adjusted to live a better and healthier life. We need to come to those areas, okay? I hope you're writing this down. If not, you can go back and watch the replay. And, and hopefully that you guys are going over to YouTube, over to our Life's Word Ministry on YouTube and subscribe. That would be awesome. We would appreciate you guys subscribing over to YouTube because, you know, you can help us get to 10,000 views. That's our goal. You know, we talk about goals. Uh, one of our goals is to reach 10,000 views. You know, you can watch them different times, you know, several times, and it counts as a view. That'd be, that'd be awesome. But listen, now we come to an area of our six steps to a happier, better life to where we have to look at, look at ourselves and decide, now it's decision time, what needs to be adjusted in order to have a better, healthier life, okay? This part here goes hand in hand with the first two steps of overcoming your past, right? And the other one was what? Changing your present beliefs and present habits. They go hand in hand with number three in understanding yourself. If you don't understand yourself, who, who do you think is going to understand you? You know, we can always tell other people, I don't understand you. Have you ever looked in the mirror and said to yourself, I don't understand you. But yet you don't understand other people. Do you even understand you? And that's what we need to start is understanding us. Overcoming your past and changing your present habits and present beliefs are very crucial into these steps. And I will even go as far as to say that this should be done before changing our beliefs, is understanding ourselves. Before we even change our beliefs, we need to understand ourselves first. Now, if we don't have a clear understanding of what makes us tick, okay? If we don't have a clear understanding of that, it goes, it's gonna be really, really hard and tricky to figure out what we need to adjust in our lives in order to have a happy, happier, better life. We gotta understand how we tick. How do we tick? How do we understand ourselves? How do we get to that point to where, you know what, I know what I'm about. I know who I am. But when you get to that level of understanding who you are, nobody 
is going to be able to dictate to you how you ought to feel about life, especially your own life, because you understand you. You're like, I know me. I know how I tick. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I know what I love. I know what I don't love. You know, you're understanding certain parts of you to a point to where you don't need anybody to tell you about you. You already know about you, but you don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to be e egotistical about it. You know, you just don't know. Well, thank you. I appreciate your opinion on who I am, being that you know me better than I know myself. Isn't that amazing? People can tell you about you better than you know yourself. Woohoo! That's a whole different message right there. Listen, so we have to get a clear understanding of how we tick. Now, the first step here in this section of understanding yourself is to start noticing what sets you off. <laughs> what sets you off, okay? We have, to, we have to understand that. We have to know that. What, what ticks you off? What gets you upset? Have you ever sat down and just analyzed, you know, why you got upset at what somebody said or what somebody did? And you're like, huh, why'd I get upset at that? What made me mad? You have to notice certain things that get you to that point. Now, women, women, I understand. And I'm learning even more so that once a month, you guys go through some chemical imbalance in your life. <laughs> I understand that. And I'm learning, you know, how to deal and how to handle when that time of the month comes because I'm trying to understand the one that I love okay the one that I'm in love with the one that I'm developing more of a loving character with okay so we have to understand hey Ishmael what's up we have to understand you know how other people tick and I know that once a month my fiance you know, she goes through chemical imbalance that I'm like, woo, Lord, help me, Jesus. Okay? So we, we pray through it. I pray for her. I pray with her. You know, because that's something that you women will go through until God blesses you not to go through that anymore. What do they call that? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, hormones or, you know, whatever. Y'all know what it is. Terry, how you doing? You know, menopause. Once you get to that point to where you don't have to experience all those different changes as, you know, once a month of life, you know, you can start moving on and be a little more happier, a little more patient, a little more kind, a little more long-suffering, right? So, men, we have to understand our mates. We have to understand and know that certain times of the month, one, their body is going to go out of whack. Once a month, their mindset is going to switch on you. Like, seems like that. But if you understand her, you understand how her body ticks. So you have to listen to her. How do you listen to her? You watch her. Listen to her. There's a, there's a, there's, it's, it's like this. I'm learning that before that time of the month comes, okay, there are... I guess signs there's warning signs and I write that down on the calendar and say okay this time of the week she's starting to act like such and such and such or she's uh, reacting to such and such and such you know either on her job or with her kids or whatever or with me right I'm paying attention to all that I'm making notes so it can help me understand how she ticks it helps me understand and 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 to relate to how she's feeling. And then, what I do as a man of God, okay, but as a man, because I wanna know how her body works. I wanna understand, and men, we need to understand how our women's bodies work and how those changes come once a month so we don't get all discombobulated talking about, you know what, you tripping. I don't know what's wrong with you. You got a bad attitude, not realizing that it's working up to her monthly cycle. Now I know this ain't, you know, this type of talk about monthly cycles and stuff, but it's all a part of understanding yourself. And if you're married, if you're engaged, if you're dating, you need to understand not only yourself, 
but you need to understand the person that you're with. That, that goes with good communication habits. Are you communicating with your spouse? Are you communicating with your loved one? And it's not just this, it's action. Are you paying attention? Do you understand how she works once a month that she might be out of whack and you fill her love tank even during that time? Christine, she'll testify to this. She's working right now so she can't throw me those hearts and say amen, amen, amen. But I'm understanding her more and better every single month. And now what I'm doing, I'm working with her to help establish a better or easier uh, transition through that monthly cycle. So it works for both of us. So men, don't, don't leave it to the fact to say, you tripping. No, they not tripping, come on. <laughs> they ain't tripping. It's, it's that monthly cycle coming in. Pay attention, that's what I'm saying. Pay attention to her body and how she's working every month. Then, that makes a he healthier, happier, better life for both of you. If you take the time and understand how she ticks. This ain't the relationship uh, treadmill motivation. That's a whole different show, but this is all a part of understanding yourself. So if we can understand ourselves, and if you're, you have a partner, if you understand her or him, then you'll be able to understand more about yourself. Okay, because it goes hand in hand. So we have to, we have to take life lessons in understanding those that we love then that way she won't be all pissed off at you every month. <laughs> you know, we, that's a whole, we might have to do a session on, on that side of it. All right, now, understanding what ticks you off, understanding what makes you mad, understanding what gets you to that point to where you snap. These are the things that you have to take note of. When you're at work and somebody says something and you snap, you be like, oh wait, why'd I snap? Why'd I, why'd I get upset? You know, Coleman, what's up? We have to, we have to understand that side of us because that's going to help us to become happier and help us to have a better life is understanding what makes us tick and what makes us upset. Now, what makes you sad? What makes you mad? What makes you sad? Right? You have to understand that certain things trigger certain emotions. Okay, and this, like I said, goes hand in hand with number one we were talking about on Monday, overcoming your past. Sometimes you can sit and think, and this is why it's not good just to sit and think, you know, because you might think about some of that raggedy stuff. You don't need to be thinking about all that raggedy stuff. Find you something to do. Like I get on the treadmill, you know, work it out, work it out, right? So what makes you sad? We need to work on what makes you sad. Think about it. When you have a thought, and that thought all of a sudden now is taking over your whole mindset. And now all you're doing is thinking about past hurts. You're thinking about who did you wrong. You're thinking about who owes you money. You're thinking about, man. And now all of a sudden that sad countenance come upon you and it's just messed up your whole day. Because now you sad, you hurt for something that was yesterday. So we need to notice that. We need to make note of what makes us upset and what pisses us off, okay? Now, what makes us feel anything, really? When you look at, at, at understanding ourselves and understanding what makes us mad, what makes us upset, what makes us sad, what makes us happy, what makes us glad, you know? Then we have to, we have to take an account that, okay, what is it that makes us feel anyway, okay? Here's some help with this and being, being able to record all of your beliefs, okay? Recording all your beliefs, your ideas about yourself. You write it down. Record some of the things that's happening to you, when it's happening to you. It's good to keep a journal with you to when something affects you a certain way, write that down. Put a date on it, okay? Note it. Okay, today, I got sad for XYZ. So when you go back and re 
renew your, or not renew, but when you review your journal, you look, okay, at this date, at this time, I was sad for some reason. And now you've written it down in your journal. This is why it's important to have a journal. Jill, what's up? How you doing? Have a journal, daily journal of your activities. You know, keeping track of what's going on. So now you can reference back and now you can start working on changing those things. Right? What's that? No. I can't see that, man. I got my glasses off. Don't, woo, don't run out of breath <laughs> while you're walking. Hey, man, this is what it's all about, brother. I got to get it in. I didn't work on the treadmill yesterday. I was out landscaping, so brother got to get it in. All right, now, so you want to write down in a journal what's, what's affecting you, what's making you happy, what's making you sad, what's making you mad. Write it down. Write the time. You know, keep a journal of all that. It's important. You, you might think this is trivial, but it's all in understanding how you tick and how you relate to certain people and situations in your lives. All right? Because what it's doing is painting a better picture where you're coming from and where you want to go. You know, it's like kids. The best way they learn, or one of the best ways, I won't say the best way, is through pictures. Okay? You can identify with a picture more so than most words. So if you're a visual person, you know, you're like, well, I don't understand really what they're saying. But once they start writing it out, drawing you a visible picture, now your mind clicks and goes, oh, I can understand that. I get it now because now you're visual. Some people are visual. Some people can read something and get it right then. Some people hear it, get it right then. Some people do it all. They see it, they hear it, they read it. Man, it's like, boom. Genius in the making, but it gives us a better picture of where we're coming from. Now, another good way to understand how you function is to practice meditating. We talked about this a little bit on Wednesday about meditating. Just understand is 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 good. Hey, Jeanette, how you doing? Is meditating and med getting into a quiet place, getting into a place to where you don't have any distractions. If you work from home and you're by yourself good time to meditate. If you work at home and your children are around, well, you might have to put them little boogers down there for a nap. And while them little boogers are sleeping, you need to take advantage of that, okay? That might be your chance to clean up the house or, you know, do something for you. But have at least 15 minutes of quiet time for yourself so you can meditate. But when you're meditating, just don't meditate on stupid stuff. Meditate on something wholesome. You know, get the Word of God and Read the Word of God and meditate on God. Meditate on His goodness. Meditate on how He's blessed you. Meditate on how He's taken you off of a job and allowed you to work from home. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Meditate on that. Meditate on scriptures and good things that have happened in your life. Don't meditate on the negative because it has a way of overtaking your quiet space. So you don't want that. So you want to meditate. On a good thing. So when you meditate, you want to calm the mind down. This is why people meditate. You know, look at the Buddhas, monks and things. You know, they out there up in them Himalayan mountains and stuff. And they out there meditating. You know, they sitting for hours and hours upon a day. Just sitting there, just meditating. You know, I ain't going to close my eyes because I don't want you all laughing at me falling off this treadmill. Okay? So, but they're sitting in a quiet place and they're calming their mind. Some of y'all... Mind is like a hundred miles an hour, constantly going. Even while you sleep, your mind is going a hundred miles an hour. But, however, however, but, whatever, if you learn to calm your mind down, you'll have a peaceful sleep. If you learn to meditate in a way to where you're calming your thoughts down, now you're, you're starting to get a handle on understanding who you are, okay? So it's calming your mind down and you're easing the thoughts that have upset you. You're easing the thoughts that have made you mad. You're easing those thoughts of people doing you wrong. You're easing those thoughts of people cheating on you. You're easing those thoughts that people are robbing you in whatever capacity. So you're easing those thoughts. And, and, and you're allowing yourself to come to a place of peace, a place of rest, a place of quiet, 
however long you decide to meditate. Now, as I do, let me give you some scripture on that. Psalms 119.99 says, I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statues. This is what David was saying. David said, man, I, I have more insight than all my teachers. Why? Because he meditates on God's statues. It's not to say that you are know-it-all or smart, smart aleck, right? But it's being able to meditate on God's statues so you can be wise. What did I say earlier in the week that my prayer is? God, give me what? Give me more understanding. Give me more knowledge. Give me more wisdom and give me more intellect. If I don't pray for a house on a hill, if I don't pray for that 2018 Escalade, <laughs> if I don't pray for that Maserati, if I don't pray for that GT Continental Bentley, oh, see, I'm letting out all my secrets. However, now, what I do want is to have wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and intellect. Because as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a leader in any capacity that you are, you need those in order to rule effectively, in order to be an effective leader. you got to have that. So how do you have that? By meditating, by reading and studying God's Word. Now, here's one thing for the students. You find it hard to study your school lesson? Read the Bible. When you start reading the Bible, the God opens up your mind. He opens up your understanding. He opens up your intellect. So now when you go back to going doing your schoolwork, it now becomes easy. For instance, I hated math. I don't know, people that love math, you know, I bless you. Hey, good for you. I hated math. I'm like, I don't use math on a, on a level that the college was telling me that I needed to use math. I'm like, wait. Why do I need intermediate algebra one and two? Really? I don't need in, in, I don't need intermediate algebra to collect offering. I don't need that. But because of my master's degree, I had to have it. And here's the thing: because I was accustomed to reading God's word and meditating on God's word and understanding myself in God, when I went through in the intermediate algebra one and two, I got an A in both of those classes. Up, 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 throw it up. Yeah, I did. I got an A in both of those classes. I surprised myself because I even was complaining to the counselor. I was like, yo, why do I need to take, I was like a tantrum. Why do I need to take intermediate algebra one and two? I'm a preacher. I'm a leader, you know, I'm not doing all this calculating and your scientific, all this scientific stuff in church. I don't need all my offerings. You know, now we pray that our offerings do get to that level that you got to break up that scientific calculator in order to keep up with all the offerings that God is blessing to come in, that you can bless the ministry, right? Oh, anyway, but I still had to go through it. And God blessed me through it because of how I was already meditating on his word. Let me finish. At first, all this meditating, all this understanding yourself, this could be quite difficult because we are so used to thinking every minute of the day. We're constantly thinking, right? Meditation allows us to gain greater awareness of our minds and a greater awareness of how it functions. It allows us to declare and reduce and, and the, re, the reactions of our attitudes and it reduces our reactions to things I call the monkey mind. You ever seen a monkey? Monkey's always busy. A lot of people got the monkey mind. They're always thinking, always, you know, messing with something, always doing something, coming down to a close, always getting into something. That's the monkey mind. So when you're at work and you got one of one of them guys that's always in somebody's business, always in somebody's cubicle, always talking to you, you trying to do your work and they, they, they're bothering you, call that the monkey mind. Because they're busy, always busy, always talking, always running off at the mouth, right? You'd be like, man, I wish they would shut up. Here, here's, here's a key, a clue that can help shut some of those people up. Pray and ask God to shut them down. A real quiet prayer. God, in the name of Jesus, I declare that John shuts up. 
God, in the name of Jesus, I decree that Mary is about to shut this down. And eventually, they're going to shut down it and get out. That's the monkey mind. All right? Now, we need to, we need to understand how an inner experience sets us off. It's like a chain reaction. So we have to understand our and reduce some of our reactions of life experiences and shut that down because you know reactions they're like chain reactions you get mad at something then it starts a chain reaction okay so this is how the brain works it produces a physical result that frustrates us you know all these negative habits all these negative thoughts all these negative people around us we can reduce our our reaction to those people and when you reduce that you have a ha ha happier, healthier life. And that's what we want. Now, when you begin, when you begin to become aware of these reactions that you're having to these people, the ants, if you tap now, when you, when you start learning and understanding how these reactions have and what they have on you, now you're starting to move into an area of your life that you can start controlling and understanding yourself. So when you begin to become aware of these reactions and what causes them, oh man, you can take control and change the effect that these external stimuli have on you. This is why it's important to understand yourself. All right? I hope I've been a blessing to you today. I wanted to get it in before it got too late. I appreciate you guys coming in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, joining in on this treadmill motivation. I appreciate you guys so much. And as I always do, I want to pray for you, pray it out. You know, you might not want to receive, you want to cut it off right now. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. You know, it's all good. But I still want to pray it out and bless you. And God covers you through the weekend. God, I pray in Jesus' name that those that have been watching Treadmill Motivation, that you bless them, encourage them. God, give them the mindset that they need to be more effective in the position that they're in, in a position of leadership, in a position of, of, of a, 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 a teacher, or whatever capacity that they're leading in, that, that those that look up to them, God, that they give them the right knowledge, give them the right understanding, give them the right answers. Give them, oh God, the wisdom and, and the knowledge that they need and the intellect to be able to be effective leaders in whatever capacity of leadership that they're in. I pray, oh God, that you touch them right where they are. Bless them. Bless their household. Bless their family. God, anything and everything that's bringing confusion in their lives, I declare and decree by the power of God that you go in and you suppress it for them, oh God, that you reduce stress, reduce hardship in their lives. And I pray, oh God, that they continue to have a blessed weekend as they close out this Friday and remember you, oh God, in all that they do. I pray for them in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for them being faithful followers to Treadmill Motivation. God bless their health in a special way, in every capacity. God, give them raises on their jobs. God, bless them co-workers, bless them employees. Give them favor on their jobs, oh God. And we pray that as we, we continue to move on in this study of six steps to a happier, better life, that they put you first above all else. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Love you much. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, go over to YouTube to Life's Word Ministry. Uh, subscribe there. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Life's Word Ministry on, on Instagram. Life's Word Ministry on, on Facebook. Life Words Men, M-I-N, on Twitter. We really appreciate you guys so much. And anyway, you can. You want to donate to the ministry and help us uh, in any capacity that you can because it's all going back. You know, into kingdom of God. This is why we're in, in ministry is to help, to be a help to others. You can go on Life's Work Ministry on Facebook and you can donate there. Appreciate you so much. If you want to contact us, you can contact us at Ministry at gmail.com. And please pray for us. We thank you. All right, you guys. I will definitely see you on Monday. Remember, love God. Love yourself like we talked about today. And God, by all means, love others. Live hope and change all right christine love you baby i will see you guys next time ah darrell you gotta catch the replay man i'm signing out bless you guys we'll see you soon